Michael here. Today we're going to unbox and review Toro's 21 inch super recycler with the personal paste. Now this is a residential mower. This isn't a commercial mower. This is for the homeowner. This is a homeowner mower. And to help me review it today, I'm going to bring in the one and only Carl Childer. I love them french fried taters. Yeah, let's review that mower. So if there's something I don't like about this mower, I'm going to let you all know about it. So the first thing we need to do is get it out of the box. And it tells you right here. No razor knife. You know why? Because you're going to cut the grass bag. The grass bag's on top. So I'm going to cut it from underneath. Carefully, as I pick up on the lid here with my knife. Oh, don't you love the smell of a new lawnmower? Mmm, smells good. So here's the grass bag. Take that out. Looks like we have to uh, clip this on, put the bag to the frame. Pretty simple, straightforward. That's if you get yours in the box, if you buy it somewhere where it comes in the box. If you buy it from a dealer, chances are they'll set it up for you for free, maybe not. Maybe they'll charge you, I don't know. All dealers are different. So there's the bag. Good looking bag. Got a handle back here. Help you shake them grass clippings out. Pick up the handle. Some more packing. Side chute. So we could side discharge, we could bag, and we could mulch with it because that's the idea behind the recycler. It's a mulch system that is supposed to grind up the grass real fine, put it back in your lawn for more nutrients. So you have to do less fertilizing. That's the idea behind the recycler. Now they've had that recycler for years. So this isn't nothing new. And they give us a bottle of dinosaur syrup. And for those of you who don't know what dinosaur syrup is, that's oil. So we'll get it out of the box, put the syrup in it, and as Carl Childers always says, gotta put some gas in it. Put some gas in it. So we'll put some dinosaur juice in it. Got a little protective saran wrap here. Now the engine on this one is Toro's engine. You could also get this with a Briggs and Scratton. But this one's got their engine on it, Toro's own engine. So we open the packet, take out the oil, and they also give you a packet of fuel treatment. This is enough for one gallon of gasoline. It claims it'll treat fuel for 12 months plus, 12 months or more. You got your warranty card, which you're gonna wanna send in. So your five year warranty will be good. They have a five year warranty. So here's the warranty card and then your manual which you're going to want to read so you can familiarize yourself with the mower. Now look at the mower. Pretty nice looking. It's black. Kind of stealthy looking. So this has an all aluminum deck. It's not a steel deck. It's aluminum. So steel deck will rust. Aluminum will not rust, but it will corrode. That's, you know, that's a little bit different. That's like aluminum's rust, this corrosion. So I know they say it doesn't rust, but aluminum will corrode if it's got a bunch of 
moisture under there. And another thing about aluminium is if you hit something, like a rock, you pick up a rock, I've seen where mowers come in where it'll actually punch a hole in the deck, so you gotta be aware of that too, so. But you're not supposed to be hitting rocks with your lawnmower. You're only supposed to be cutting grass. You're not supposed to be grinding stumps with it. And it's only made to cut grass. So we got wheel adjusters. And the rear ones are greasable because of the power drive. It's got a washout plug so you can clean the bottom of the deck. You can hook a garden hose up to this. And then you're going to want to run the mower while you have the garden hose running. That's what cleans it. So we'll set our adjusters on D because we're going to go and cut with it. And it also has Toro's Smart Stow with the handle. So you can put the handle like this. You can stow the mower against the wall. And it's nice for when you need to get underneath it to clean it. If you want to get under here and scrape grass out or change the blade. And it's got these little kickers, they call them. And this is to help grind up the grass as you're mowing. It's supposed to hold the grass in sus suspension and then as it falls, the blade will cut it again and grinds it up real small. And that's supposed to help put nutrients back into your lawn. That's the idea behind the recycler. And there's your drive, your power drive system. So you don't have to worry about stowing a mower in this condition or in this, this fashion because all the engine oil is going to run to the back. <laughs> So as long as your oil is back here, not towards the spark plug, you'll be okay. So that's kind of nice for storage. And then it's got these little shock bumpers back here. And you flip these, and that locks your handle in. So now those little bumpers got a little shock absorber there, so that's kind of easy on you. And the personal pace system, the drive system, that's been around a long time now. And how that works is, is harder you push on this, the faster it'll go. So that's how it senses the pace that you mow at. Like if you're real old and decrepit, like slippers, then you'll, you can mow this fast. But if you're a fast walker, you can mow faster by pushing on this hard. So that's that personal pace system. Been around a long time. I like it. I've liked it since they came out with it. I thought that was kind of nice. So you don't have a fixed speed at what you can cut at. Let's see. Lift up the flap. And it's got the removable mulch plug. So you'd have to take this out if you want a bag. And if you want to do the mulching, you got to slip it in here. Get it past these tabs and then pull it back towards the lock and you can lock it in. If you want a side discharge, you leave that plug in Open this door, got a latch on it to unlock it, and then just clip this in. Now you can side discharge. Now you can make it do three things. Put the bag on, it's pretty simple. Lift up the flap, make sure your mulch plug is out of there. And it just locks right in to here. And then let go of the flap, that kind of holds it in place. So when we take it out, we'll bag with it a little bit, we'll mulch with it a little bit, and then we'll side discharge with it a little bit. So you have three adjustments for the handle, depending on your height. 
You just take these knobs out, one on each side, and you can adjust the height of the handle, depending on how tall you are. So that's kind of nice. And another thing you probably noticed is it's all black. They're getting away from their signature red. Looks pretty cool, don't it? Black with the black wheels. Just a little highlights of red. And it's got the kind of gas cap that once you fill it and you put it on, it's like on the cars, you turn it till it clicks. So we got it all filled up, ready to go. It's got an auto choke, so there's no priming. You just pull the handle and go. So let's take it out and first we'll bag with it. We're behind my shop, and as you can see, grass is pretty tall, and a lot of it's kind of burned up. So we're gonna try it out here. Now I got it on D, which is right in the middle. So it's kind of up high. So let's see how it does. Good job, as tall as the grass was. A couple spots where I might have to go over it again. But you're really not supposed to cut the grass when it's wet. Didn't, that, that amount we did, we still had a lot more bag to fill. Now let's take a look underneath. Not a lot of buildup for that short amount. Wet grass. Rounded up pretty fine like they claim. Them pieces are pretty, pretty short. So their little system seems to work. That grass was tall. All right, let's uh, put the mulch plug in and cut some more wet grass. Where the all the grass can't get out because now we're blocking everything off. Make sure it fits over those tabs. Now again, we're going to be cutting some pretty tall grass that's a little damp. It's not real wet. It only rained for about five minutes. Seem to do a good job on that wet grass, even though it's tall. Ideally, I was always taught for a mulcher, you're not supposed to cut more than two inches of the grass at a time, because that's what makes it want to clog up. So again, let's take a look underneath.
Not a lot of buildup, considering it's wet grass. Did a good job. Ground it up nice and tiny. Didn't have to go over it twice. You seen how tall it was. Ideally, you're not gonna be cutting wet grass. But, you know, we figured, hey, it's raining out. Let's, let's try and see. That seems to be doing a good job. Now let's uh, side discharge. Let's bush hog with it. Let's go through that deep stuff over there by that telephone pole. We'll let it blow out the side. pretty heavy and it choked it down but hey you're not supposed to be cutting it using it like that now let's take a look not bad it did well we're gonna try their washout plug and I think it would be good to put it all the way on its lowest setting when you do this to kind of keep some kind of vacuum under there. And I've got the side discharge off and I took the mulch plug out because I'm concerned that if you left the mulch plug in and this gets built up with grass from bagging, it's gonna get hard in there, solidify, and that may be a problem. I wanna see if it's gonna clean all this out by having that mulch plug out. All right, Junior, turn on the water. Turn one. 
kind of hungry for pea soup now. <laughs> now, of course, you would probably do this in the grass. You're probably not going to want to do this on your driveway because it would make a mess. So let's pop it up again and see how well it did. And we ran it for probably not even a minute. That's got like 90, 90% or plus of that grass out of there. Whoa. Junior being a trickster. Let's see how it cleaned back here. Yeah, it did a decent job. I don't know, maybe if you ran it longer. I say we only ran it for probably less than a minute. You could always take your garden hose and spray it off anyway. So at least it gets most of it off, and that's the trick. You got to do it when you're done mowing. You can't do it a week later after all the grass is all dried up under there and expect that washout plug to work. You got to do it as soon as you're done mowing before you go to put it away. And as I mentioned earlier, it's got Toro's own engine on it, which goes by gross foot-pounds of torque now, so that's not seven and a quarter horsepower. That's seven and a quarter foot-pounds of torque and 159 cc's. So figure five horsepower, five and a half, I think six and a half horsepower is like 208 cc's, somewhere around there. But it seemed like it's, you know, strong enough for a push mower. So this is a good mower for, you know, somebody that's a lawn freak. Meticulously takes care of their lawn. You know, and they want a nice mower to, to cut their beautifully manicured lawn that looks like a golf course. I think that's the person they're trying to attract. This is a good mower for them. Good looking mower. Got the nice self-propelled system, wheel adjusters, grinds up the grass real fine, just like they claim. I really can't find anything wrong with it or any drawbacks. Seems like a, you know, pretty good mower for the money if this is what you're looking for. Now they also make this mower with the Honda engine, the Toro engine, and the Briggs and Scranton engine. They also make this mower with a blade brake stop. So when you pull this down, it engages the blade. So when you go to start it, you don't have to have this down. It's got what's called a blade clutch. So when you let go of this, the engine keeps running. So you don't have to keep stopping and starting the engine if you want that feature. It costs more. And they also have it with electric start. You can get it with electric start. So for more information on this mower, if you're interested, go to Toro's website or go to your local Toro dealer and tell them that Terrell sent you. Say you saw the video, Terrell sent me to check out this mower and I want to see what you think. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! The only drawback I can see to this lawnmower is the same drawback I see with every piece of power equipment. And that's not changing the oil, not changing the air filter, leaving old gas in it, pouring old gas in it, leaving it outside, not keeping a sharp blade, putting the blade on upside down. I could just go on and on and on. Any piece of power equipment, if it's used for what it's intended for and properly maintained, will give you years and years of service. So keep that in mind.